Lord, Jesus Christ, life and resurrection of the world, and the Son of the living God, give us grace to speak of your resurrection, of the miraculous deeds that you have performed in Hades, and of the wonders that you have worked in the underworld. Grant us leave to utter mysteries through your death upon the cross, for you have adjured us all and strictly forbidden your servants to reveal to any man the secrets of your divine majesty which you have wrought in Hades. Now after being placed alongside our fathers in the abyss, the shadow of death, that deep darkness wherein lie all who have died since the creation of the world, something like the sun shone suddenly upon us and illumined us all. And how great was that light, the golden radiance of the sun and the hue of royal purple. And we could see each other in that midnight hour. And the father of the whole human race rejoiced together with Abraham, the patriarchs, and the prophets. And they all cried out to one another, This light is shining from a great illumination. This light can be none other than the author of everlasting life, who has promised to give us the light of eternity. Then Isaiah, one of those who was standing there, cried aloud, Father Abraham, and all of those who are gathered around, listen to the words I speak. In the days that I walked the earth, I prophesied the coming of this light by the teaching of the Holy Spirit, through whom I sang, Land of Zebulun and Naphtali beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people sitting in the midst of darkness have seen a great light. And among those who dwell beneath the shadow of death, a shining light has broken forth. Now it has finally come and illumined us who sit in death. And when they heard his words, they turned his way. Who are you? Father Abraham asked him, for you have spoken the truth. I am Isaiah, he replied. And even as we were celebrating in the light that had dawned in our midst, our father Simeon came to us rejoicing and saying, Give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, for when he was an infant in the temple, I took him into my arms, and the Holy Spirit prompted me to declare, Now my eyes have seen your salvation. You have laid it out before us all, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and for the glorification of your people, Israel. And after hearing this, the host of saints rejoiced the more, even as Hades and the gates of death all trembled. Then we heard the rumbling voice of the Son of the Most High Father as he thundered, O oh, princes, raise the portal, hoist the everlasting gates, and the King of glory, Christ the Lord, will come up and enter therein. And behold, Satan, the luminary of death, rose up even as the saints exulted, fled in terror to his officials and infernal authorities, and said, My officers and nether powers, hurry up and shut the gates, Secure them now with iron bars. Resist them all and bravely fight, lest they should capture us and keep us bound in chains. Then all of his unholy minions were disturbed and went off with all diligence to shut the gates and to carefully fasten all the locks and iron bars. And they brandished their weapons as they howled in a most frightful and gruesome voice. Then Satan, the prince and heir of darkness and ringleader of death, approached Hades and gloated. O oh, most insatiable devourer, hearken to my speech. Brace yourself to receive the one that I am bringing down to you. For there is one from among the Jewish race named Jesus, who calls himself the Son of God. And to this voice Hades replied, That voice that cried out indeed belonged to none other than the Son of the Most High Father. The entire earth, you see, even down to the regions below, shook so hard at the sound of it, that I think that now both myself and my dungeons lie exposed. And Satan, that leader of death, replied, What has gotten you so teary-eyed, my most ancient and vile friend? Have no fear. I have turned the whole race of Jews against him. They struck him with blows to the face just as I commanded them. I even managed to turn one of his own disciples against him. He's the same as any man, so afraid to die. Just look, it was out of fear that he cried aloud, My soul is almost dead from sorrow. And I was the one who brought him down, for he is nothing but a man, and he has just now been lifted up and hung upon a cross, so get ready to secure him here. He caused me a great deal of trouble when he walked up there among the living. He has wronged me and taken a stand against me at every turn. He has cast out as many as my servants as he came across. 
He has cured all whom I had disabled through his word alone. The blind, the lame, the leprous, and the like. He has even reclaimed the dead that I have delivered over to you. Is he really so powerful, Hades challenged Prince Satan, that he does all this with his word alone? If he fears death so much, then who must he be to have such authority? Will you indeed be able to hold your own against him if he has this kind of clout? Look, through your might you have brought down and subjected great people to my rule. So if you have this kind of authority, and he manages to frustrate your command, what kind of power must lie behind this man Jesus who is so afraid of death? I am telling you the truth. If he shows this kind of ability as a human being, then he must truly be all-powerful and divine. None can stand against such strength. And if it is, as you allege, that he said he feared death, he only said it to deride and to ridicule you, with an eye towards seizing you with a hand of strength. And woe, woe to you forevermore. Oh, Hades, most insatiable devourer, answered Satan, Prince of Tartarus. Tell me why you have such doubts. Why are you so afraid to receive Jesus, our mutual nemesis? I am not afraid of him. I have tempted him, stirred up the religious fervor and righteous indignation of my ancient people, the Jews, against him, sharpened a spear to pierce him with, mixed gall and vinegar for him to drink, ready the tree to crucify him on, and gathered thorns to prick him with. Soon he will be dead, and I will be able to bring him here to you, subject to both you and me. Therefore, when he does get here, be prepared to hold him fast. O oh, heir of darkness, Hades retorted, son of damnation and devil, you have just now told me that through his word alone he has brought many back to life whom you had ready for burial. You have informed me that he has himself drawn the dead from me. I have held a great many here who managed to take the dead from me when they lived upon the earth. It was not through their own power that they did this, but through their prayers to God, and it was their almighty God who drew them from me. Who then is this Jesus, who takes the dead from me without such prayers? If then he has released other people from the grave, by what means or strength are we to detain him here? A short time ago I swallowed up this dead man named Lazarus, and not long thereafter he was forcibly removed from my entrails by the word of one from among the living, and I think it was the one of whom you speak. Then Satan, the prince of death, said, It was Jesus, all right. And after hearing this, Hades remarked, If it is that same one who by order of his word alone caused Lazarus to fly like an eagle from my bosom after four days of death, then he is not a man from the human race, but God in all his majesty. Were we to let this man in here, then I fear that we could lose everyone else as well. Just look, I can sense the unrest of all whom I have devoured since the world was made. Oh, how my belly aches! The taking of Lazarus from me seems to me an ill omen, for he was not taken from me like an ordinary dead man. No, the earth cast him forth as swift as an eagle. Now, Satan, master of all evils, I implore you, by your strength as well as mine, do not bring him here to me, for I fear that even as we are expecting to capture him, he will take us captive instead. Just look. If all it took was his voice alone to destroy every bit of my power, what do you suppose that he will do when he shows up here in person? For as soon as I heard the word of his command, I shook with horror and dread, and all who served me were likewise mortified. So I am now quite sure that any man who could do all this must indeed be God himself, powerful in dominion, mighty in humanity, and savior to all mankind. Behold, I fear that his entire purpose for coming down here is to raise the dead. And I am telling you, by the darkness that surrounds us all, if you should bring him here to me, he will free all of those who are locked away in the cruelty of prison, shackled by the unbreakable chains of their sins. He will bring them into the eternal life of his divinity, and not so much as one from among the dead will be left for me. Do not be such a coward, Satan retorted. You had better ready yourself, because he is hanging on the cross already, and there is nothing else that I can do. If there is nothing else you can do, Hades replied, then recognize that your destruction is at hand. 
Now I will no doubt remain cast down and in disgrace, but you will be placed to suffer torments in my embrace. And all of a sudden, even as Satan and Hades were arguing it all out, a voice thundered, and spirits cried forth, Raise your gates, you rulers, and be lifted up, you everlasting gates. The king of glory is on his way. Now when Hades heard this, he cast Satan out of his kingdom, saying to him, Go and fight him if you can. Go then, get out of my house. If you are such a mighty warrior, then go and battle against the king of glory. Satan therefore left his presence. Then Hades ordered his most wicked and demonic servants, Shore up the cruel gates of brass, and firmly fasten the iron bars. Tighten and secure them all, and hold fast my bolts. Stand tall and keep your eyes open for anything. Take courage and resist, that we who hold captivity might not ourselves be taken captive. For if ye should get in here, calamities will befall us all. Now the saints could hear the conflict between Satan and Hades, for they did possess knowledge, though they did not yet recognize one another. Ruler of death, our holy father Adam answered Satan, tell me why you shake with fright. Behold, the Lord is coming to demolish all that you have contrived. He will lay hold of you and bind you up forevermore. And when the saints heard the voice of our father Adam, and the boldness with which he had answered Satan, they were strengthened in their joy, and they all came running up to father Adam and crowded around him. Then our father Adam stared out over the great multitude, and wondered in astonishment if all in the world were a descendant of his.